the rain was, you know, it was like sheet rain in our face then. We knew we'd only had five miles to go at this point. Absolutely soaked right the way through. And I went down hard on my knee, so it really hurt my knee. I, I, I actually thought at that point I would have to withdraw. Training at first was very difficult to work around work, family, life balance, but I'm an early riser anyway, so I thought about it. The way I'm going to do this is sort of set the alarm for 4.30, 5.30 every morning, and then head out the door. Come rain or shine, I was heading out. Sometimes I was getting out there even before the birds were getting up, and it was, sometimes it was a drag, sometimes I really enjoyed it, I was looking forward to it. I'm Ginger Al, um, I'm a trail and ultra runner, um, and I've probably been doing that now for the best part of 10 years. Um, but before that, I was in the, in the army. I used to do a lot, lot of running um, while I was in. Uh, purely um, when I was in, it wasn't necessarily through choice. It was, I was being told I had to run it. Uh, but I got, I got out um, in 2002. Um, and I had a break for about six years because I had a back injury, which was really stopped me from doing any sort of physical exercise at all. I put on a hell of a lot of weight and then I uh, went to the doctors and he was like, you know, you need to think about your health. Um, I would found out that I'd had a uh, ulcer and an abnormal liver function, which was quite worrying. So it kind of gave me that kick up the backside to uh, get my training back in order. When I was in the army, we used to do um, sort of um, exercises where you know you, you'd go for for long periods. You know, so you'd probably do two or three days on exercise away, where you'd have your pack on and you, you'd cover sort of 40, 50 miles a day. Then you'd sort of you, you'd set up for the evening, and then you'd go again the next next day, sort of doing route marches. So I thought naturally, you know, I've done marathons, done half marathons. I thought next natural progression is to do ultra marathons. Well, the gal has always really been on my radar. It's been on my radar for a long time. Um, me and my brother, we always like to go down on the do the coastal paths. On a whim, really, I signed up for it. And it was almost immediate as soon as I woke up that the the anxiety sort of was kicking in. Glad when that sort of starting whistle went, and we could just go on that nervous energy just sort of just went. The first 
sort of third of, of the uh, of the ultra was on tarmac. Um, I'm not a fan of tarmac. Let's say years ago I was used to like running on the tarmac, but as I've got older, I found that I get more injuries from it. It was really, really sort of niggling away at me. As soon as I kept saying to myself, as soon as I can change my socks, my shoes, that is it. That's trail. It's all trail, and then I can sort of sit back and enjoy enjoy what was what's to come. So we got to checkpoint two, I changed my trainers, uh, shorts, t-shirt and then headed off. I felt a million dollars um, heading out then because you have know, brand new socks on. It really does give you a massive, massive boost. I can't emphasize enough how much of a boost it gives you. So down this single track I was, I was off and I was, I was motoring now. I thought, yeah, this is it. I've got this in the bag. Within, within 500 meters, um, there was a massive mud puddle and there was no way around it. So through it went ankle deep mud, uh, water, and it kind of started to zap any little bit of uh, um, sort of um, energy and enthusiasm I had. And I thought, Do you know what? Yeah, this, this, this is ultra running. This, this is it, you, this, I'm here. So I got to checkpoint three, there's a, a girl there, Sarah, she got out of her um, wet gear, put it in her bag and then she, she set off. Um, at this point I didn't know who she was. 
So I got down about, I think it was about a mile, maybe a mile and a half downhill section, uh, and then we started going to the sand dunes. And then as, as I was running up the, after the first sand dune, I saw this figure bent over in front of me with a kit all over the, uh, all over the path. So I was like, oh, are you okay? And she was like, oh, I've lost my phone, I've lost my phone. I said, all right. I said, uh, do you want to go back? And she was like, no, I think I've left her at the, the aid station. So I was like, all right, okay, here's my phone. Do you want to ring the, uh, the organizer and see if it's there? And if it is, then they can take it to one of the next, the, the, the next stations. She was gutted because she couldn't take any photographs of the next part of the race, um, which was going to be a, along the coastal path. So you're looking out to the sea and the soft coast, now the sun is up and it's got some spectacular views. Um, so she kept saying to me, she says, if you take photographs, can you send them to me? I said, I don't know who you are. <laughs> it was really, really funny. It was quite, quite surreal. I was overtaking people and then I caught up with Sarah um, in Rossilli. Again, she, she was panicking, she kept checking the map um, and she didn't know where she was going. I said to her, look, it's getting dark. I'm a bit worried about your, you know, your, where you're going. Um, I think you should stay with me or I'll stay with you, uh, whichever. And she was like, oh, I don't want to be a burden. I said, look, you're, not, you're absolutely not going to be a burden. I would, wouldn't feel comfortable with leaving anybody out on the trail if they're unsure of, the, uh, of where they're going. So I had it all there. Um, so I said, look, stay, stay with me and uh, we will get you back safe and sound. I said, look, if you want, we'll get you to the next aid station. And you know, if you're not, not comfortable, then you can withdraw. And she was like, that's not on the cards, absolutely not, not an option. Steps in an ultra. Oh, in at 40, 41 miles. Do you want the steps or? I don't want to share this will do. Come on, come on. Uh, we got to Three Cliffs Bay. Um, we met up with uh, my brother. He was going to run the, the rest of it with us, um, and then Sarah met up with her husband and the kids. 
Uh, so that was a massive boost for her. And I had a, a, the most amazing cup of coffee from one of our boys, Tronkster, um, who was on one of the on the aid station in Three Cliffs Bay. I also have to have to say, you know, these it's little things like this that keep you going through ultra marathons. Um, that was a massive boost. So these they're all little things which you're always so thankful for. Hi, right, right. Ah, I can't leave, I can't Back. Back. Quietly to the left, guys. Oh, yeah. That's the first lap you've seen him. <laughs> yeah, we went kind of uh, on an adventure. It was getting, starting to get dark now, so it was, um, yeah, so obviously navigation becomes difficult. Absolutely soaked right the way through. Then yeah, we, we, we carried on. The rain was, you know, it was like sheet rain in our face then. We knew we'd only had five miles to go at this point. Um, but. <laughs> Coming down uh, into Caswell Bay, there, there was a, a steep banking, which was I don't know, probably 20, 30 metres of, of a mud bank, but it, the, it was about six inches deep of mud. Ryan and Sarah managed to get down without, um, without any problems. And then I've come down and gone arse over tit. And I went down hard on my knee. So I really hurt my knee. I, I, I actually thought at that point I would have to withdraw. You know, we could see over in the distance. We could see the lights of the cricket club, and he was just sort of drawing us in. You know, but at this point, there was there, there was um, seven or eight of us together at this point. Uh, nobody was saying a word. You know, they sort of the, the joviality had gone. Um, the weather had kind of um, it was beating us. Uh, we we sort of, we as we were coming in, then we could hear the uh, the crowds. We could hear people cheering, and they were like, "Yeah, come on, you you've done it. You've been amazing." I can't remember where I was. I think I was about 30 miles in. Um, I was having a particular low point, and I got, you know, I had my on the side of my pouch. I got uh, where my phone is, and I could, I felt it vibrate. It's really weird, really, because I'd not really felt it vibrate all day, even though I knew I was getting messages. So I picked up the phone and on there it was a message from my boy and it says, come on dad, you've got this light work. You know, and it was really there. Uh, 